What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Unplugged and Uncut, the new source for sports news and entertainment. You are live with your boy, Unique, and we're about to get into the San Antonio Spurs being linked to Keegan Murray and some of the possible moves they might make in this year's draft. The draft is just one day away, and we got a lot of information to go over, so we're going to just get right into it. That is right, the Spurs have been linked to the Sacramento Kings' fourth pick, and their said target is Keegan Murray. Now, it does make a little bit of sense from a roster fit that the Spurs would be targeting Keegan Murray, and also the Kings make sense as a partner. So before we get into Keegan Murray too much, let's see how the Kings make sense as a trade partner. Well, the Kings are sitting there with the fourth pick. And if the Spurs are targeting Keegan Murray, they're going to have to get up to four, five, or six. In most draft boards, Keegan Murray is going fifth um, and as low as seven. So you're definitely going to have to move up to get him. He's probably not going to be sitting there with the ninth pick. Now, the Kings roster, they have Fox, Mitchell, and Sabonis all playing positions that Jaden Ivey and Keegan Murray would want to play on their roster. So the roster fit is not quite there. And with there not being a stretch five or a true small forward available, maybe moving back to nine makes sense, especially if they're able to pick up a couple extra draft assets so you could see a trade look something like the fourth pick for the spurs ninth 20 and a future top three protected first round pick so the kings would be trading their top five pick in for three first rounds two this year and one in the future that's top three protected the ninth and the 20th they're only moving back five slots and then they can take the best player available that fits their position mark williams aj griffin could be sitting there two outstanding players that would fit more of their roster and what they could use on their squad right now for the spurs you do come into a little bit of a situation of what if one of the top three teams decide to select Jaden ivy you could have Paolo Bancaro, Chet Holmgren sitting there at four. Do you still draft Keegan Murray? All right. Do you take the best player available? Do you have Jaden Ivey, who has the potential to be the next John Morant and just take over the league? He's got that type of superstar potential. Or do you take the player that you're targeting or said to be targeting? Could that said targeting just be smokescreen? for the player you actually want. So you'll have options there at the fourth pick and you still have access to the 25th and 38th. So it's not like you're giving up too much. You are giving up a lot with the future first being added. At least it is top three protected. So that's how you could see the Spurs move if they wanna get that Sacramento King pick. Now, we already did a draft profile on Keegan Murray, so I won't get into him too much. However, a couple things to note. He's a six foot eight combo forward, probably better suited as a small forward, 225 pound, really smooth moving, high scoring guy. He averaged 23.5 points, 8.7 rebounds, one and a half assists, 1.9 blocks, 1.3 steals. That is all excellent and <laughs> really excellent numbers. However, the 1.9 blocks and 1.3 steals could be better because there is a lack of consistency at times with the effort he's putting out on the defensive end. Now, he definitely has the potential to be a great defender. Hence, you're not going to average almost two blocks and one and a half steals without having that potential. But the consistent motor on that side is not as strong as his 23 and a half point production that he's gonna put out on the offensive end. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is that he is 21.8 years old. He's almost 22. So he is a 
plug and play now type player. He fits the timeline right in between Keldon and DeJounte. So he's not too old, but it's good that he has that defensive potential already there because you don't want to have to try and build upon those skills as somebody at almost 22 years old when the season's going to start. But those skills are already there. He just got to have, not got to have, got to have it. <laughs> My bad job. <laughs> He's just going to have to put in that consistent effort on that side. And that's for almost any young player. Most young players are going to put out more energy on that offense because that's what's going to get them to shine than they are on the defense. However, he does have the potential. So that's a little quick rundown on Keegan Murray as a prospect with the Spurs supposedly targeting him in this year's draft. However, if you got the fourth pick and you think Jaden Ivey can be the next Jean Morant, do you pass on that as well? Many options. Next, if the Spurs do not are not able to find a deal with the Sacramento Kings and they're not happy with the prospects sitting there at number nine, they could potentially move back. Oklahoma City Thunder has been shopping the 12th pick because they want to get back into the top 10. That is right. They've offered the 12th pick and a future first rounder. Don't be surprised if the Spurs move back to 12th and take the best big available. Something we could see. Now, the next team we want to talk about is the Charlotte Hornets because there are multiple ways and multi multiple avenues that makes the Charlotte Hornets a great trade partner. Especially if the rumors are true that the Spurs are shopping Yaka Pertl. The Charlotte Hornets are looking for upgrade at center. We could see that number 13 pick in play. Also, if the Spurs are willing to rent some of that cap space for a veteran like Gordon Haywood, Charlotte Hornets will probably jump all over that opportunity and package the 13th pick with that. So there's multiple ways to get that 13th pick, especially if you're going to go after one of those top five picks and you're going to give up multiple assets. The Hornets make sense as a partner, either written cap space or shopping Yaka Perto. Next, we want to go over a swing for the fence type play. Now, this is dealing with the Houston Rockets because their GM did say that the number three pick could be had if the price is right for both teams. So I tried to put together a little package that could work for both teams. In this trade, we'd have the Houston Rockets give up the third pick and the 26th pick. The San Antonio Spurs would give up the ninth pick, the 20th pick, and two first round picks in the future. One of those being the Chicago pick. The Chicago pick could be very, very valuable, especially if Zach Levine leaves. You got an agent, DeMar DeRozan and Vucevic over there leading that squad. Is that enough to keep them in the hunt in the playoffs? Or do those players want to leave as well if Zach Levine leaves to chase championships? And not to chase championships, but to play for contenders. So it could be an interesting situation going on there with that Chicago Bull pick and could be very valuable. It could be the key to getting that number three pick. Now, if you look at the third and the ninth pick and the 26th and the 20th pick, both of those are six position moves that help both teams. So of course the Spurs are winning going from the ninth to the third, moving up six spots, but the Rockets are flipping, are flipping, sorry, not flipping, <laughs> they're flipping the 26th pick and switching that to the 20th pick. So that's another six position move and allows you to get a player that might have slid, that probably should have been in the lottery. So that could be the type of trade you see that works for both teams. However, I do think that is the least likely scenario. That is a lot of draft assets to have to give up for a number three player. And then again, you're in the situation of you might get the best out of the big three, Bancaro, Smith, or Holmgren. But you also still got Jaden Ivey sitting there and Keegan Murray. That's why I think the, the Sacramento Kings make the most sense if you're trying to move into the top five. Now, getting out of the top five top players, 
there are other options the Spurs have as well. So one trade that could make sense for both teams is the Spurs engaging with the Philadelphia 76ers. Spurs offering the 38th pick in Jay Rich for Danny Green in the 23rd pick. So Danny Green does have a torn ACL. That would give the 76ers a player to help them win now. Josh Richardson averaged over 12 points, just barely, but he did average over 12 points a game. He shoots at a 40 plus percent clip from three point range, and he's gonna play some good defense. Not great, but he's gonna play really, really solid defense. Kind of what Danny Green was giving you. And for the 76ers, you still get the 38th pick, which is one of the higher second round picks, and those contracts have a lot of value for teams especially if you're going to have to find out what you're going to do and offer James Harden. So that second round pick could be very valuable or valuable. And the Spurs could target a player with the 23rd pick like Nikola Jovic, Jaden Hardy, Kendall Brown, or whoever you think the best player available is. And you can see this type of trade come to fruition if the Spurs have to give up multiple first rounders. So let's say we go back to that Houston Rocket trade and the Rockets are like, we'll do it, but we don't want to give you the 26th. We want to give you the third for the ninth, the 20th, and two future first. If the Spurs are able to engage with a team like the Atlanta Hawks sitting at 16 or the Charlotte Hornets or even like we just proposed right here with the 76ers, it could make sense for the Spurs to go ahead and say, you know what? The front office and the brain trust is like, Brian Wright, it's okay. Pay a little extra this year. We're going all in on win now moves. Let's get this deal done. We got other plays we can make in this draft to still move up that are very feasible and accessible to the team. So you could see the Spurs be very aggressive. And that's a win for all Spurs fans. <laughs> they are. Speaking of Danny Green. I know he has a torn ACL and would most likely be out all of the season. But he would be a great fit in the locker room, knowing the Spurs, the Spurs system, knowing Pop's temperaments and helping young players adapt to dealing with Pop and understanding that he's just breaking that tough love. And then once you're outside the court, he's going to just provide that overall team feel. So Danny Green gives you that playoff experience and know-how to win a championship as well. And there's always the slight chance that he is ready to play by the playoffs. It's not a bad player, a multiple champion bringing off the bench or perhaps even inserting into the starting lineup depending on the matches like Otto Porter was this year for Golden State Warriors. So there is that possibility. It also gives Danny Green the ability to train with the training staff that he knows and is very familiar with. So I think there's definitely a way to make that 76er trade happen. It makes a lot of sense if you're going to overpay to get one of those top five picks. And... I think the Spurs would be targeting the number three and number four. And more in particular, that number four pick is the pick that they have been linked to. So that's what we got for this part of the show, guys. I can't wait to see what you think on uh, what type of moves we should expect the Spurs to make because I do believe it's going to be a blockbuster day tomorrow. <laughs> and the Spurs might come out very aggressive and we could see quite a few moves being made on the draft but i can't wait to see what you guys think in the comments that's all we got for now your boy is out peace